Welcome to Barnard College! Although many of you have already toured campus and are beginning to familiarize yourself with the sights and sounds of Barnard, we've put together a short tour of our own to showcase our school's rich history. So follow us! Founded in 1889, Barnard was one of the few American colleges in the country where women received the same education as men. It was named after Columbia's 10th president, Frederick Barnard, who fought unsuccessfully to admit women into Columbia. Instead, Barnard was created as an affiliated school due to the efforts of Annie Nathan Meyer, a student and writer who fought for women education in New York City. Her peers helped her petition the university trustees for an affiliated self-sustaining liberal arts women's college within two years, Barnard opened. Originally located at 343 Madison Avenue, the school had six faculty members and less than 40 students. When Columbia moved uptown in the early 1890s, Barnard moved with it, purchasing an acre of land along Broadway and extending to 116th Street in 1903. The unique relationship between Barnard and Columbia has historically allowed for Barnard students to benefit from a small liberal arts college with the resources of a large research institution of Columbia. Here at these gates, students from both Barnard and Columbia walk through to learn from some of the leading professors and researchers in the world. Here are now at Milbank Hall, the first building on Barnard's Morningside campus. Milbank was built under the name Brinkerhof in 1896 and at the time originally housed the entirety of Barnard College. It was renamed Fisk in 1897 before becoming Milbank. Today, many administrative offices are housed in Milbank, such as the Provost and President's offices, as well as the Bursar and the Registrar. My first year, and now my major advisor, works in the building as well. Additionally, several academic departments are housed here, including the theater department, which puts on several productions each semester in the minor Latham Playhouse in the east wing of the building. Fun fact, the first show I ever saw on campus took place in this theater and was called a dream play. Since then, theater has become a big part of my experience at Barnard. Welcome to the Quad. When I was a first year, I lived in Reed Hall on the second floor. Your floor is a great way to meet people, and living in the Quad means you have access to four different residence halls, Brooks, Hewitt, Sauls, and Reed, full of people. Brooks was the first res hall built in 1907, shortly followed by Hewitt Hall in 1925, Reed in 1961, and finally Sauls in 1988. The quad is also home to two important lounges, Well Woman and the Zorona Hurston Lounge. Well Woman is located on the first floor of Reed, past the elevators. Well Woman is a health and wellness office who work hard to make sure students stay relaxed and healthy throughout the year. The office is open during the semester, Monday through Friday, 1 p.m. to 4 p.m. Additionally, Well Woman have other Barnard students working as peer eds to create programs and offer advice to students of all class years. Their hours are Sunday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday from 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. The Zero Neal Hurston Lounge is a space honoring the amazing activist, writer, academic, and person she was. Hurston, who was Barnard's first black graduate in 1928, has inspired generations. The lounge on the first floor of Reed is home to Boss, Barnard's organization of soul sisters, and a nice place to come and relax. In addition to Zora Neale Hurston, Barnard has matriculated and hosted a number of famous and influential people. Here in Barnard Hall, you can view this plaque commemorating the location where Malcolm X gave his final speech. He visited Barnard on February 18, 1965, just three days before he was killed, to speak to Barnard students and faculty in Lefrac Gym, which has now been turned into the Lefrac Center Library and Study Space. As an English major, I spend a lot of my time in Barnard Hall, writing papers in Lefrac, meeting with my advisor, whose office is on the fourth floor, and using empty classrooms for study groups. It's one of my favorite buildings on campus, both for its variety of spaces and for its history. As for alumni, Barnard has been home to powerful writers like Antozaki Shanga, June Jordan, and Jeanette Walls, whose memoir, The Glass Castle, is being adapted into a film this year, starring Brie Larson and Woody Harrelson. Other Barnard graduates include actors like Greta Gerwig and Lauren Graham, and activists like Dean Spade and... and Grace Lee Boggs. The 1935 graduate is featured in a mural inside the Hewitt Dining Hall, which you can get to in the basement of Barnard Hall. Grace Lee Boggs was one of the earliest human rights activists and spent seven decades fighting for racial justice, feminism, and labor rights. Hewitt is my favorite dining hall on campus, and I love being able to see this inspirational mural as I eat my morning cereal. Built in 2010, the Diana Center has become the center of social and intellectual life at Barnard. With classes, event spaces, a green roof, and a dining hall, the Diana Center has established itself as a school fixture and a leading example of eco-friendly architecture in New York City. Named after Diana Vagelos from the Barnard class of 1955, the Diana Center is also home to some student services, like Barnard Student Life and the Student Computing Services. The Diana Center is also home to a few academic departments and connects to Alcho via an underground tunnel, which also leads right to the mailroom on campus. 
Barnard also has a lot of traditions that happen around campus each year. Historically, the Barnard Greek Games was a central tradition on campus. Starting in 1903 and running every year through 1968, the Greek Games were a competition between the first year and sophomore classes. The statue we're standing in front of now is the torchbearer, given to the college by the class of 1905, the same class who founded the Games. The Greek Games were revived in 1989 for the centennial celebration, and then again in 2000. More recently, the Greek Games took place this past school year with a sophomore class, my class, coming out victorious. Other traditions on campus include Big Sub and Midnight Breakfast. Big Sub is perhaps my favorite tradition on campus and is always a fun way to spend time with friends. Each October, an enormous 700 foot long sub is assembled all around campus. Maps are handed out to students which indicate what types of sandwiches are located where. There are truly sandwiches for everyone, vegetarian and kosher fare, as well as tuna, chicken salad, and more. Midnight breakfast takes place on the last night before finals begin each semester. During the fall semester, first year students get access first. Band of the Diana Center where they are served breakfast food by senior administrators at midnight. Also available, drinks, cake, and ice cream. Midnight breakfast always comes at a crazy point in the semester, but is a great way to relax and take a break from studying before, before finals actually begin. These traditions also present a great way and time to create new traditions with friends. For example, every semester on the night of midnight breakfast, my friends and I show up super early and just mill around outside in anticipation of the event. As you can see right now, the new library is under construction. In 1960, Lehman Library opened with study spaces and classrooms for new students. Before it was torn down as a way to say goodbye, the library held an event where students painted the walls with whatever they wanted. In spring 2016, construction began on the new and exciting center we are all waiting for. The new building, called the Milston Center, will open its doors in August of 2018. The building will be double the size of the original library and include a computational science center, a digital commons with innovative teaching labs, two Barnard signature programs, and something I think we're all particularly excited for, social and study spaces for students. We've learned a little bit about Barnard's rich history, from the construction of the first year residence halls to notable alumni to a variety of campus traditions. It's your turn to make an impact at Barnard. Welcome, Welcome to, to Barnard! Barnard!